Have you ever noticed that when you don't assert yourself as a parent, you end up doing something sneaky when you really shouldn't have to? Well, that's what the loud parents found out in the episode I'm going to talk about today. So join me as I, Steam Team Read Up UK, CC Trainer Ling, bring you another retro review from past seasons of The Loud House. Cue the intro! Today's episode is Pipe Dreams. In this episode, Mr. and Mrs. Loud grow tired of having to wait in long lines for the bathroom, so they secretly build their own without any of the kids finding out. The biggest detriment to the episode is how the story tries to frame the two main characters, which in this case would be Rita and Lynn Sr. The story tries to make them look like they're the bad guys, even going so far as to give each of them stereotypical evil villain laughs and faces to match. The writers want you to believe these two deserve to be punished for their actions and attitudes, and yet all their actions and attitudes about building a second bathroom are completely justified. It's already bad enough that parents are presented as pushovers in letting their own kids dictate the rules of the bathroom, both in reality and their own fantasies. But then Lenny says towards the end, those two can still share the upstairs bathroom with their siblings. I'm sorry, but I take some serious issue with that. It almost sounded like the kids were giving their parents permission to use their bathroom. I didn't like the way that sounded. While I'm willing to accept the idea that maybe the parents established the rule of of having to be fair and wait your turn to use the bathroom, I believe Rita and Lynn Sr. are not willing to put their proverbial feet down and override their own rules because they're the parents is a bad indictment of their characters. To think they had no problem laying down the law with their kids in an episode like Frenzy, albeit only during the first half of the story, but that's a hell of a lot more than what they did here. Basically, the impression this episode gives is that these two are completely incapable of exerting any authority over their kids, everyone is on the same level, and the bathroom below belongs to and is shared equally by everyone. I get the idea, and that's technically not a bad way of looking at things, but the reality is the bathroom in the Loud House is not everyone's, at least not in terms of who truly owns it. It's actually the parents' bathroom and their kids are simply allowed to use it. The parents are the ones who provide for the kids by every stretch of the word. A roof over their heads, food, water, the whole nine yards. So if these two working parents want to jump the line for their bathroom or build a second one just for themselves, then they should. Better yet, if they want to build a second bathroom and tell their kids they can only use it if it's an absolute emergency, that would be a fair trade-off. It would also cut down on the long line for the upstairs bathroom, so it sounds like a win-win situation. But no, they're not strong enough to lay down the law with their kids, so they choose to build a second bathroom without telling them. They try to secretly put the whole thing together in their bedroom closet and are nearly caught several times, although I found it rather convenient they were able to avoid being seen with construction hats and planks of wood with zero questions being being asked. Eventually, they do finish putting everything together, and they absolutely love the fruits of their labor. I mean, seriously, who wouldn't? But then the pets send them into a total panic about their best-kept secret. The pets make their way into the bathroom on several occasions when no one is around, and the parents think their kids are the ones meddling with it, assuming they had figured out their secret. So the parents start adding one security feature after another in an effort to make sure no one other than them can get inside, but here's an interesting question. If the parents thought their kids really were using their secret bathroom, wouldn't the kids have said something about it long before the security measures were added? I'm pretty sure in a family that big and knowing how much of a hassle waiting in line can be, the parents would have been called out on their hidden bathroom sooner rather than later. Either that or the kids were trying to keep this newfound secret for themselves, but I digress. Anyway, as a result of locking down the bathroom, the parents inadvertently end up trapping themselves inside, the shower handle breaks, and they're on the verge of drowning until they scream for their kids to break down the closet door, thus exposing everything they were hiding. So they go back to using their regular bathroom since they don't have the money to fix the one they made. Then again, it was weird how these two people raising 11 kids on a tight budget were able to find the money and technicians needed to build a second bathroom with multiple security features, so that's another question that never gets answered. Overall, I think I've made it pretty clear why this episode is just bad. It tries to make the parents look like the antagonists for supposedly doing something wrong, and yet wanting to fix their ongoing bathroom 
problem isn't even a bad thing. I understand they felt like hypocrites for trying to cheat the system and they do own up for being secretive, but their actions were justified. Still, the kids did technically have a right to be mad about what their parents were doing behind their backs. While they were upstairs ready to burst their bladders, the parents had a spare bathroom available if no one else was using it. Maybe I can see why the writers wanted to make the parents look like the villains, but they didn't deserve to have their hard work go to waste either. The very least that could have happened was maybe having the kids ask permission to use the other bathroom if any one of their situations were dire. But as we saw, these parents lacked the willpower to set rules, and they wound up spending all that money for nothing. So yeah, none of the main characters were presented very well. The little moments with the parents trying to put the bathroom together came off as mostly flat with very little humor. Although I will give some credit to Lynn Jr. for making that weird face when her dad tried to sneak past with a bunch of pipes stuffed in his pants. You know something's wrong when a random facial expression is the standout highlight of a 10 minute production. So if you're looking for an episode where the story wants you to hate the two lead characters for doing something objectively logical and gives you an ending where everyone comes out as a loser with nothing changing for the better, then you'll find what you're looking for right here. In other words, it's like Lana's bathroom bucket old sloshy, so I think you know where I'm going with this. With that said, I give Pipe Dreams a 2.3 out of 10. Well folks, that concludes my review of Pipe Dreams. So I gotta ask, what did you guys think of this episode? Sound off in the comments below and be sure to click that subscribe button for more Loud House related content. That's going to do it for me. I'll catch you guys for the next video. But until then, this is Steam Team Read UK, CC Trainer Ling, signing off. Peace out, home slices.